Hello, third graders of Mount Vernon. I am Mrs. Miller. Twin Oak kids know me as Mrs. T. Miller. We have two Mrs. Millers, you know. So here we are today doing our virtual field trip. Behind me is the Knox County Courthouse. Can you see that? Yeah. We're gonna go in today and we're gonna meet Judge Nixon and find out about his job and how he is a helpful member of our community. All right, let's go inside. All right, third graders, we are now inside the courthouse. Can you see that? There we are. Going in to meet with the judge. And this is where the judge sits when he is in session. And here are the tables where when you meet with the judge, you sit. And then here is the gallery where we're gonna sit. We normally come in. Here is Judge Nixon. So Judge Nixon, can you tell us about if you grew up in Mount Vernon and if you did, what elementary school did you go to? And if not, just tell us what you remember about being a third grader. Well, good morning. Thanks for coming uh, virtually here to visit the courtroom today uh, with all the kids and to, to Ms. Miller. Um, I, I did grow up here in Mount Vernon. Um, I went to Annan Elementary School. So I lived on the north side of town, uh, went the wrong direction. Uh, third grade, uh, I remember I had Mrs. Compton for third grade. That's one of the, uh, one of the only teachers I can remember, strangely enough. The third grade, um, she was a very good teacher. Um, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to do uh, as many uh, field trips probably as you do. I never got to come to visit a court. Um, I kind of wish I would have. Um, I, luckily, I never had to come visit the court otherwise either. And I hope to never see you guys in here. But I do remember I have good, good memories of um, elementary school at Van Emmett. Um, again, Ms. Compton, who was uh, one of my more formative teachers, probably the first teacher that I remember too. So. And then the kids also wanted to know what college did you go to? So I went to undergrad um, for my bachelor's degree at Ohio University down in Athens. Um, both my parents went there too, so it's kind of a, they call it a legacy there um, of sorts. Uh, so both my mother and father went to undergrad at Ohio University. And I also had a great aunt, they tell me we got a teaching certificate, a great, great aunt, they got a teaching certificate there in, uh, 50 or 60 years ago too. So um, I went to OU, I got a psychology degree there, um, and I went to work with computers um, for a couple years after uh, after undergrad, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you can't do a whole lot with a psychology degree without getting at least a master's degree on top of that too. So um, I decided to work a little bit with computers uh, for a little while kind of hit a, a ceiling there where I couldn't get promoted again before, um, unless I had more education. So I decided to go back to law school and I went to law school um, instead of going for computers and more psychology, I decided to change tracks there. Um, and I went to the University of Dayton for uh, law school. I graduated in um, 2009, from, so 11 years ago I graduated. Is there a grade level that you remember being um, difficult for you, whether it was through like law school or when you were younger? Well, law school was very difficult. Um, it was certainly um, a different experience than any other school I've been in. Uh, I would say that was the most mentally or academically challenging for me. Um, I, it was also the place where I kind of finally found what I wanted to do, I think. Um, I always had like an inclination that I wanted to, you know, I had an interest in the law. Um, I grew up reading, um, you know, I think since you guys are probably a little far away from reading To Kill a Mockingbird, but I'm hoping eventually you'll read that somewhere in your education. Uh, that was kind of my first introduction to the legal world. Um, and I was, a, I was an avid reader, still am to a certain extent, which helps in my job because you have to read a lot if you're a lawyer or a, or a judge, right and read. Um, but I, I got interested, I think, in the law through To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, started reading John Grisham books, um, Scott Turow, uh, some other, you know, probably, I probably read 50 or 60 legal novels um, throughout, you know, my childhood. Um, that really, it was really engaging. I was always a, I was always excited about reading, um, which if you're interested in 
doing anything successfully in life, reading is, is going to be a big part of it. Whether you're in the legal profession or you know even an engineer, mathematicians, they still have to read about theories and stuff like that. Scientists, um, you're reading and writing papers constantly. Doctors, the same. Um, any any field you go into that is uh, you know a professional field, you're going to have to be uh, good at reading and writing. So brush up on those. Um, make sure you pay attention in those classes. But again, that's where I derived my, I think my love for the law was through, uh, through reading. So, and again, once I got to law school, it was very challenging, but I, I, I knew that I, I was where, uh, I was in the field that I wanted to stay in um, for the rest of my life. How long have you been a judge? So I've been technically a judge since November of 2018, uh, so about a year and a half. Uh, prior to that, I was a magistrate here in the court, which is, I won't bore you with the, the differences, but it's, it's kind of like an appointed judge um, here in the court. So I was a judicial officer, if you will, for uh, about five years um, total prior to being appointed judge. So I've been a judicial officer for uh, you know six years or so now. Okay. Um, so what is the difference between the work that you do here at the Knox County Courthouse compared to the municipal judge? Mm -hmm. So specifically my job encompasses, my jurisdiction encompasses uh, juveniles and that's, you know, if you get in trouble for breaking the law, you can come in and see me, hopefully I don't see any of you. Uh, I, I also do some custody cases for uh, kids who, whose parents are not married. Uh, we have jurisdiction over abuse, neglect, and dependency cases. Those are children's services cases where uh, kids are in dangerous situations and we have to intervene. Um, on the probate side, we have adoptions, um, guardianships, uh, estates that come through. Um, you know, when, when you when you pass on, uh, your estate has to be taken care of by the court. Um, we have name changes and other kind of weird jurisdiction that the probate court has. Um, so I don't necessarily deal with uh, a whole lot of and they're not called crimes, it's called delinquency in juvenile court, but crimes are breaking the law. Municipal court, that is a, a very large part of their docket is uh, dealing with people who have violated the law, um, and that would be at the misdemeanor level. Uh, so there's two levels, misdemeanor, which is uh, kind of lower level crimes, and traffic crimes, which are even below misdemeanors. The, the municipal court deals with adults who break those misdemeanor laws or traffic laws. Uh, the, they also have jurisdiction over civil cases. So if you have a, um, the municipal court, if you have a contract with someone and they break it, or you are renting an apartment from someone and they break that lease, or you break the lease by not paying rent, uh, they have jurisdiction over those cases up to $25,000. So kind of in the, in the grand scheme of things, those are the smaller cases, the smaller civil cases. Uh, judge Wetzel, who is the judge for the Common Police Court General Division, that's another division of this court, deals with uh, adults who violate serious crimes, felonies, um, and uh, they issue CPOs, civil protection orders, um, to keep people safe from abusers and uh, other adults who are you know, breaking very um, serious laws, the felony laws, and also those civil cases that are high dollar, anything over $25,000 in dispute, the, the Common Police Court General Division handles, so that's Judge Wetzel. So there's some differentiation there. I deal with all the kids for the most part. Um, Judge, uh, I'm sorry, Judge Thatcher at the Municipal Court deals with the lower level of criminal offenses, and Judge Wetzel deals mainly with the higher level of criminal offenses. Wow, I had no idea there were so many different ways to break down the, yeah. the laws and the courts in those ways. All right, so um, another question that a student was asking was, um, do you have a favorite part of your job um, or a hardest part of your job, the best part, something like that? Yeah, that's easy. The best part of the job is adoptions um, because it's a lot of times, almost all the time, people aren't happy to be here. Um, hopefully, Miss Miller's happy to be here this morning. I hope you're happy to be here this morning. But when I see, you know, for instance, I'll see a kid and they've broken the law and they're coming here and get punished. They're trying to, you know, or, um, you know, generally they're not happy to be here. Uh, if people are fighting over custody, uh, it's not a happy time. A 
adoptions are the exact opposite. Um, everybody is very happy, um, especially when the uh, child is uh, you know, a little bit older, um, they can kind of appreciate the, uh, the moment as well. Um, you know, I, sometimes I'll get, get a gift for the kid. Um, it's just, you know, we'll take pictures. It's a celebratory time. Um, almost every other hearing is, is very you know, it's sad for somebody, um, if not everybody who's here. So. Are there some important lessons that you've learned from being a judge? Yeah, um, what I'll say is my, I think my temperament, um, you have to stay reserved. Um, you can't show, if you're outraged, if I'm outraged by something or I, something funny in the courtroom or something's um, crazy happening in the courtroom, it, no matter what happens, you have to stay stoic on the bench. And that is to say, um, not show emotion. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to alienate anyone or give anyone, you know, um, an impression that I'm being impartial or I'm, you know, affected by anything up here. So you have to kind of set the tone for the courtroom too. Um, if you know, if I if I'm more reserved, it's more likely that they're the parties and the attorneys will be reserved. So I learned to maintain. Um, Certainly, I hear very outrageous things here, but I've learned how to maintain kind of composure better, I think, in the face of um, some pretty outrageous evidence that I've heard here. And we talk about that in the classroom too, maintaining our composure, yeah. so. And that's that's important, not just for a judge, but you know, in just in everyday life, uh, you, <laughs> um, for the most part, um, if you're in a professional setting or, you know, when you, grow up to be professionals, which I hope uh, a lot of you do, um, yeah, you have to, you have to be, um, you have to kind of be reserved, take, take things as they come and, and not uh, overreact to things, but especially up here, um, I have to stay, uh, you know, certainly I, I, I want to stay fair, I want to stay composed, and I don't, you know, I want to keep order in the courtroom. You've answered so many of their questions. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you wanted to add or share about your job or anything like that? Well, I, you know, I, if anybody's interested in, um, if, if you have any more questions, I can leave uh, my email address with Ms. Miller. Um, if you wanna give them to her, I can try to answer your questions. Uh, otherwise, hopefully, uh, I know you're gonna miss you're going to be fourth graders next year, and I'll have the third graders. And again, uh, it's unfortunate that you're missing this in-person experience. But if you ever want to come visit the court, um, if you have any personal questions, if you want to come ask me personally once we open back up, um, it's a public courthouse. Um, you're more than welcome to come in. Uh, and if I'm available, I'll do my best to, to uh, meet with you if I can. Um, I would encourage you to continue, um, like I said, like I stressed before, reading and writing. Uh, if you want to be an attorney, if you want to do something in a professional capacity as an adult, uh, pay attention to you know reading and writing, uh, very important. Uh, math doesn't come into my job too much, so but there's a lot of other jobs that that's important for, so I don't want you to blow off other subjects either. But pay attention in school, uh, pick up a book. This would be a great time to, to start you know, uh, pick up the, the good habit of reading a lot. There's there's a lot of bad habits you can pick up, and probably now more than ever, it's probably easy to do so. Uh, but if you want to pick up a good habit, start reading a book, try to maybe set a goal to read a book a day, or sorry, a book a week, a book a month, something like that. Um, keep on track um, with your studies. And again, if you want to do something professionally like this in the future, pay attention in school. Uh, don't break the law because I don't want to see you in here either. Um, but stay, uh, stay focused in school and I hope to uh, never see you here in my courtroom uh, for the delinquency case. All right. So it was nice to meet with all of you and uh, thanks for coming into my courtroom virtually. Thank you, Judge Nixon.